Welcome to Audio Conferencing Basics. In this module, we will provide an overview of the major components and design considerations of the audio conferencing system, including microphones, loudspeakers, and the conference environment. The audio conferencing system must fulfill two basic criteria. It must pick up outgoing speech from a talker in one location and reproduce it back to a listener in another location without picking up excessive noise, creating echo, or distortion. The system must also provide appropriate user controls, such as volume control and mute functions. A quality audio conferencing unit is an essential component to these criteria. But to achieve a high-quality audio conferencing experience, other critical components and aspects of the system design must be considered, including microphones and loudspeakers, and the conference environment. This is a basic illustration of an audio conferencing system. Let's look at how audio flows through the system. Audio from room A is picked up by the microphones in room A, which is then sent to room B by way of the audio teleconference device, the network, and finally to the loudspeakers in room B. In this system, the audio teleconference device improves performance by removing echo and noise from the audio. This will be discussed in more detail in upcoming modules. Another performance consideration is the quality of the audio network, which is what provides the connection between the two conference rooms. Remember, the performance of this system is only as good as its weakest link. Any component in the system, including the conference environment, can be a limiting factor to the overall performance of the system. A clear, strong pickup of the talker's voice is an essential step to good audio conferencing. As a general rule, position microphones as close as possible to the talkers and away from loudspeakers and noise sources. This helps target the talker audio while minimizing undesirable audio at the microphone. There should be enough microphones so that each participant is approximately equal distance from a mic. Using too few mics results in some talkers being too loud and others too quiet. There are multiple types of mics to meet the requirements of a variety of applications. The advantage of table mics is that they are generally close to and in front of the talkers and far from common noise sources such as projectors and HVAC. Disadvantages may include people placing objects such as papers, laptops, etc. on the microphone. The advantage of gooseneck mics is that they get the talker even closer to the mic. The disadvantage is that they are far from transparent, which may discourage participation and natural communication. Ceiling mics are the most transparent option, and they are ideal for reconfigurable or multipurpose rooms. The disadvantage is that they are often closer to common noise sources in the ceiling than they are to the talkers. Control of noise and room acoustics is critical to their success. Lapel and handheld microphones provide excellent audio quality because they are very close to the talker. However, setup and calibration can be difficult because talker to mic distance will vary with each user. In addition to microphone type, Microphone pickup pattern or polar pattern must be considered. There are omnidirectional mics which pick up audio from all directions and directional or cardioid mics which have limited pickup range. Directional microphones pick up less background noise, improve gating decisions on voice activated auto mixers, and decrease loudspeaker to mic coupling. In other words, directional mics give you the flexibility to target the desired audio while minimizing the pickup of undesired audio significantly improving intelligibility. Here is a comparison between a person talking into a directional cardioid mic versus an omni mic. Both mics are at equal distance from the talker in identical environments. The room is fairly noisy and there is a person speaking in the background. See if you can tell which is the directional mic. Unidirectional mics pick up sound predominantly from one direction. This includes cardioid and hypercardioid microphones. Cardioid means heart-shaped, which is the type of pickup pattern these mics use. Sound is picked up mostly from the front, but to a lesser extent the sides as well. Omnidirectional mics pick up sound evenly from all directions. Although omnidirectional mics are very useful in the right situation, picking up sound from every direction is not usually what you need. Omnisound is very general and unfocused. If you're trying to capture sound from a particular subject or area, it is likely to be overwhelmed by other noise. Good room acoustics are key to good audio quality and intelligibility. The reflectivity of a room is a key factor. Reflections occur when sound energy bounces off of the surfaces of an enclosed space. 
These are the initial reflections and are short in duration. Reverberation, however, is continuous reflections that over time sum together to create a single stream of audio that persists after the original sound ceases. They vary in intensity per frequency, depending on the size and shape of the room and the surface materials used in the room. A material's reflectivity or absorption at a particular frequency is defined by its absorption coefficient. A coefficient of zero indicates the material reflects all energy, and one indicates the material absorbs all energy. A material's absorption coefficient also varies by frequency. Notice the difference between an acoustic tile ceiling and a plaster ceiling. One method of measurement of a room's reflective characteristics is RT60. RT60 is the time it takes for reverberation to decay 60 decibels or to an inaudible level once the source of the sound has stopped. For large conference rooms, it should not exceed 500 milliseconds. Here are some examples of what different RT60s sound like. The first file is dry speech. The second has an RT60 of 600 milliseconds. And the third is doubled that amount. Many factors influence speech intelligibility. Many factors influence speech intelligibility. Many factors influence speech intelligibility. Mics pick up reflections and reverb and mix it with the source audio, decreasing intelligibility. In reflective rooms, mics have to be closer to the talker to maintain good intelligibility than they do in a less reflective room. This distance is defined by critical distance. Each time the distance from the mic doubles, the sound pressure level drops 6 dB or 50%, but the reverb and noise level remain constant. Critical distance is the distance from the talker where the sound level from the talker and the sound level from the talker's reflections and reverberations are the same. When this occurs, the ratio of talker audio versus reflected audio makes intelligibility poor. In reflective rooms, this occurs closer to the talker than in less reflective rooms. This is particularly important when considering ceiling mics. Critical distance can be increased by using directional mics because of their limited pickup pattern picks up less reflections versus talker audio. As a general rule, unidirectional mics need to be at least half the critical distance to maintain good intelligibility. Omni mics need to be one-third critical distance. Another environmental factor in the performance of a conference system is room noise or ambient noise. Ambient noise is noise associated with a given environment, usually a composite of sounds from sources both near and distant. Sources of noise include air handling systems, fluorescent lighting, equipment noise such as projectors or computer fans, and outside noises. Excessive noise in a conference environment can decrease intelligibility and cause listener fatigue, particularly for those on the far end since they lose the advantage of sound localization or detecting the direction and distance of a sound, which helps us isolate speech in a noisy environment. This is the benefit of bi-oral hearing. If the speech-to-noise ratio is 0 to 10 dB, intelligibility is unacceptable to poor. From 10 to 20 dB, intelligibility is poor to fair. From 20 to 30 dB, intelligibility is fair to good. And 30 dB or greater, intelligibility is good to excellent. Consider the placement of the mic. The farther it is from the talker, the quieter the room's ambient level needs to be to achieve acceptable speech-to-noise ratio. This is particularly important to consider when using ceiling mics. A common method for specifying noise limits is by providing a noise criterion rating. Noise criterion accounts for the sensitivity of human hearing in various frequency bands. NC30-35 is a common requirement for high-end conference rooms. If you're looking for at the NC graph on the right, you'll notice that NC35 requires a noise level less than 33 dB at 4000 Hz, but allows a noise level of 45 dB at 250 Hz. This is because you are more sensitive to high frequency noises. Note, just because a room has a good NC rating does not guarantee good speech to noise ratio. This is determined by the distance the mic is from the talker relative to critical distance. The difference is that critical distance in a low noise environment is much further from the source or talker. To control noise and reverberation, use directional mics, use the proper number of microphones, move microphones closer to the talkers, use a voice-activated mic mixer, 
This way, only the active mic will pick up noise and reflections. Otherwise, the transmitted noise and reflections will be a sum of what all of the microphones pick up. Use equipment with noise cancellation technology. Use acoustic treatment for the room. Not only will this control the reverb and reflections, but will also reduce the amount of ambient noise. Use adjustable audio filters such as high pass or low pass to isolate speech frequencies. Quality loudspeakers are critical to the success of the audio conferencing system. Loudspeakers with excessive noise or poor frequency response can limit a system performance. Loudspeaker layout design is equally important in the audio system's performance. Loudspeakers can be placed anywhere, but most common is in the ceiling or on the walls for an installed system, or on the table for an all-in-one tabletop system. Loudspeaker placement should take into account the coverage area, location of the participants, the table, and the microphones. Try to utilize the null area of the microphone's pickup pattern to minimize loudspeaker to mic coupling, the cause of acoustic echo. Directionality of the sound source may be a requirement. Audio for video conferencing is a good example. In this case, you want the sound to come from the same direction as the video. The number of loudspeakers should allow for equal coverage or levels at all seating positions. Using too few speakers will result in levels too loud in some locations and too quiet in others. Ceiling speakers set edge to edge will result in a variance of approximately 4 dB depending on where you are in the room. This is not an excessive level change, but noticeable to most. Ceiling speakers center to center will have a variation of less than 2 dB. This level change will be unnoticeable to most. How close the speakers are to each other will depend on the height of the ceiling and the coverage area. Now let's look at the audio conferencing unit and its basic components. Microphone channels interface to the room mics. The preamp amplifier amplifies the low-level mics to match the audio conferencing unit's required levels. The AEC, or acoustic echo canceller, removes acoustic echo, audio coming from the loudspeaker, before it is transmitted back to the far site. In a distributed echo cancellation system, this occurs per microphone. The auto mixer provides voice activation for each microphone channel. This isolates the active talker and minimizes noise and reflected audio from being transmitted to the far site, drastically improving intelligibility. The far site interface could be a built-in telephone interface, voice over IP interface, USB audio interface for unified communication, or just an audio in and out to an external device such as a video conferencing unit. It transmits the audio to the far site and receives the audio from the far site. Line level inputs interface to program sources such as Blu-ray players or to external far site interfaces. Line level inputs do not have a mic preamp or acoustic echo cancellation and are generally not used to interface to microphones. Line level outputs interface to recorders, assisted listening systems, or external amplifiers, just to name a few. Amplifier channels interface to the room's loudspeakers and typically contain far side audio to be broadcast within the room. Amplifiers on some Clear One Pro products contain options to interface to 70 or 100 volt distributed speaker systems or to a low impedance high power speakers. In addition, multiple processing features are available including feedback elimination for sound reinforcement applications. The routing matrix brings it all together. The purpose of the routing matrix is to route the input audio channels to the desired outputs. Microphones are routed to the far side, the far side is routed to that room's amps and speakers. The routing is either pre-configured, partially configurable, or completely configurable, depending on the Clear One product. There are multiple processing and control features on each channel type, depending on the Clear One unit, and that will be covered in more detail in later modules. Time for a practice quiz. Question 1. Which of the following microphone placement options would yield the best audio quality to listeners on the far side? Is it A, mic is placed at one half critical distance, B, mic is placed at critical distance, or C, mic is placed at two times critical distance? A microphone placed at half the critical distance will yield the best audio quality. Question two, which of the following options would improve microphone audio quality in a conference system? Is it A, 
move microphones closer to the talker, B, acoustic treatment in the room, C, increasing the microphone volume, D, use omnidirectional microphones, or is it A and B, or C and D? The correct answer is E, both A and B. Acoustic treatment and moving the microphones closer to the talker. Question three. If a talker's level at a microphone was measured at 60 dB and the noise level at the microphone is 50 dB, talker intelligibility can be expected to be excellent, fair, or poor. A talker to noise ratio of 10 dB can be considered poor. This concludes the Audio Conferencing Basics module. Thank you for your time.